<sighs> Take a deep breath, would you? And let go. Another deep breath in. And let go. Another deep breath. And so good morning again. Uh, for those of you who know me or don't know me, I am Reverend Elisha Christopher, sometimes the irreverend Elisha Christopher. <laughs> and uh, my pronouns are they and them, and my ancestors on my father's side immigrated to this country from Austria, or from Ireland and Scotland, and on my mother's side from Austria and Holland, and my ancestors are truly from all over the world. <sighs> So I bumped into an interesting idea this week, which may have sparked a new thought. Uh, so we're going to explore this a little bit. Uh, there's an idea in physics talking about the, the properties of how certain things deal with pressure. And the term I came across this week is anti-fragility. Hmm. Hmm. What does this mean? So something that is fragile when you put pressure against it, it breaks, right? Something that is, we'll just call normal, you put pressure against it, and then when the pressure is relieved, it bounces back to its original shape. But something that is anti-fragile, when you put pressure against it, or when it breaks, when it bounces back, it's stronger. Ooh. Ah. Right? And so the physicist who I was watching explain this basically said, think about the human body. How do you grow muscle? If someone's going to go to the gym or work out and wants to, say, bulk up or be a bodybuilder, what do they do but stress the body out by with lifting weights or running or whatever it is that you're doing that puts pressure, that puts stress, that may creates damage in the body? But the magic of the human body is after that, when there's time to rest, it bounces back into a state that is stronger than before, right? If you break a leg or cut your skin, after it heals, that place in the bone or that place in the skin is stronger than it was before, right? So this got me thinking. <laughs> what if we become a people who think of ourselves as anti-fragile? Uh-huh, right? And so to think about the, you know, I, there's a Mexican proverb that's been running around in my head all week, thinking about our, our month, which is, they tried to bury us, but they didn't know we were seeds. Yeah. You've heard this before, right? And, yeah, right? And, and uh, if you've ever uh, tried to sprout sunflower seeds, right? They, sunflower seeds require pressure and darkness in order to sprout. If you just get them wet, they won't sprout. They have to have weight on top of them. Something has to push on them for them to get that signal to then grow, right? And so as I think about all of the things that are unfolding in our world, all of the things that might be coming into any one of our individual lives, when those moments of stress hit us, when those moments of breakdown come, or when those experiences of trauma hit us, do they break us down or do they make us stronger, right? And there's an incredible powerfully, there's a powerfully an idea here for us to really think about ourselves as being built to be resilient, right? The nature of the universe is to expand, is to become more of itself, is to continuously evolve. Well, what if that's the true nature of who we are? What if everything that comes your way comes your way to make you stronger if you choose it to do so, right? How we respond to anything, right, is how we respond to everything. And this physicist that was talking about this idea of anti-fragility gave this really amazing analogy, and he said the research shows that people who pursue happiness and seek to be happy all the time tend to be more depressed than others. It's the people who pursue happiness indirectly that tend to find it the most. It's the people who seek to grow through adversity. 
the people who seek to become more when they feel like they're less. The people who seek to overcome, to grow, and to learn are the ones who develop the greatest happiness in the end. If we're just looking to be happy, we will often find ourselves to be disappointed. And he says, think about the sun as happiness. If you just stare at the sun, you're going to go blind. Right? You can't just pursue the thing, you have to pursue it indirectly. And he says, think about the way that the sun refracts into the world when we see colors, when we see a rainbow, when we see the sparkles or the illuminated of the daylight, we're looking at the sun, but we're looking at it indirectly. Right? And so to think about this sort of as whatever it is that you're working towards, whatever it is, the happiness or the health or the wellness that you're seeking for yourself or for the world, that Sometimes we get lost in this idea that we're just supposed to focus on the positive, only look at the good things. You know, that is part of the teaching, and it's not the whole teaching, yeah. right? That we do want to look to the good, but we don't want to bypass the difficult things because it's those difficult moments, it's those little fractures and breaks, those little moments of trauma that can make us stronger in the end. But all the conditions have to be there for us to be able to have the rest and restoration that is needed for that healing to happen, for us to become stronger, right? And one of the problems with trauma in our hearts and our minds and in our bodies is that if we don't have the community or the tools or the ability to heal from an experience or to take the time that's necessary for the healing, the trauma compounds and it becomes deeper and harder to deal with and we call that post-traumatic stress syndrome. But there's another idea that comes out of this idea of anti-fragility is post-traumatic growth is that after a moment of trauma and the healing happens, you are stronger on the other side. You know, if we look to history, after the, the Black Plague and the Dark Ages in Europe is when the Renaissance came into our timeline. Right? It was after all of this death, all of this breakdown, after a huge population of the world or of the, the area had dealt with this major sickness those who healed and came out of that experience came out singing and dancing and painting and writing poetry, and all of the Renaissance came out of the healing of that trauma of that dark time of the Black Plague, right? And so, luck and luckily for us, we can take that metaphor and just bring it right up in here. <laughs> Don't even have to take a far stretch for that one, because uh, we're in the of our own global crisis, right? Everywhere you look, there's something to look at that says, whoo, this could be traumatic. And if you remember last week, our main topic of conversation was about self-care, about taking the time to recharge, to plug in your spiritual battery, so to speak, that we have to build in time for ourselves to really do the spiritual practice, to get the rest, to do what is necessary so that we can live a sustainable life and so that we can tap into that infinite source of renewable energy, which is spirit, which is source, which is the core essence of who we are, but we have to build that time into our life in order to stop and rest. Because if we just keep going, the trauma compounds and it doesn't allow the healing to happen. And so if we want to be a people who are continuously learning how to thrive more and more and more, we have to look at everything that comes to us in the world as an invitation for us to grow, to step up, to evolve, to heal, to become more than we were before, right? And I've been reflecting on this idea and I've been reflecting on myself in the last year, months and years and I've decided I'm a pretty anti-fragile person. Yeah. I really am. Um, you know, it's, it's the great adversities in my life. It's the deep traumas, the deaths, the suicide attempts, the whatever that's come my way or the ways of people in my life. It's those moments that I find that I have come out the other side as a much stronger and more solid individual. And so I want us to really recognize that as people who are focused on possibility, 
who come from this philosophy of new thought that tells us to think positive, to remember that that positive thought is the knowing that there's some good coming from this bad, right? right? That whatever the pain is, whatever the trauma it is, whatever it is that needs healing in our world is here to be healed, and when that healing happens, we will all be better for it. Right? But right now we're experiencing, and maybe in some of our own lives, but especially in our society and in our environment, there's a lot of stuff up to be healed. Right? And which means that we have to take it on. We have to do the work to heal the trauma so that we can be stronger people on the other side of whatever the other side of this is. Right? But as, as many of us know, if you've ever experienced any trauma in your life, what do you have to do? You have to seek the help. You have to get the therapy. You have to do the process to untangle all of those webs in order to find a stable structure. And so in order for us to build stable structures for an emerging world that works for everyone, we've got a lot of collective trauma healing to do. Right? And... When these moments come, some of us call it the spiritual two by four, you know, when you get whacked by the universe. Um, I had a practitioner I was working with many years ago that said, you know, the universe will always get your attention with the spiritual two by four if you're not listening. And they said to me, Elisha, have you ever thought about learning to listen to the whisper? Oh, <laughs> you don't have to wait for the big, 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 big whack. You know, spirit is whispering into us all the time. Could we learn to listen a little sooner? To start to do the work that is necessary, right? And when these things come our way, do they knock us off track? Do they make us question our beliefs and values? Or do we get proven to ourselves who we are? You know, you've heard me say many times that, you know, we've all heard Neil Donald Walsh say every time we choose to be something everything unlike it shows up, right? And what I see that as is the universe saying, oh yeah, how about now? How about now? Right? And so we, ch we choose, to, we claim to be something, to do something, and the universe rises up to meet the challenge. Have you ever said to yourself, I'm going to be peace today, and then leave your house? <laughs> And it's the person in the car in front of you, or the this, or the that. And all the opportunities to maintain your center arrive, right? It's the practice that we're in of how we actually respond in real time, right? We all have the version of who we think we are when we're sitting meditating at home in our perfect spiritual bliss. And then there's who we are when we're act interacting with each other and everyone else, right? And that's the proving time. That's the time where we get to see who we really are. And I'm starting to think more and more and more as the tests and the trials come our way, they are the universe asking, are you really who you say you are? And so, you know, you've noticed over the last months, we've been bringing a lot into our service of speaking to our values of who and what we stand for, of what we are doing here as a constant reminder for all of us to check in with our values and to keep testing them as the world tests us, to keep saying, do I stand in spiritual living? Am I working for the awakening of the spiritual magnificence of humanity? Am I building a world that works for everyone? Or do I keep finding myself falling back into old ways of doing and being? And so I want us to really, this week, as we look at the world, there's plenty to look at, pick something. And ask yourself, what is the invitation here for me? Maybe look for the thing that might really kind of give you a little trigger. Because there's a message there for you. If you see something in the news or you interact with a human, another, another human being and something gets rubbed up against you in an uncomfortable way, there's an invitation there saying, who will you be in the face of this? Who will you be in response to that? Who will you be in this particular moment, in that particular situation? Because the tests are always coming our way, but they're pop quizzes, folks, so you have to be ready. 
right? Which means that we have to deepen into our values. We have to daily go back to our spiritual practice to find our core, to remember our truth and our values so that it becomes so deeply steeped in who we are that we become the living example to ourselves of what is possible. And then when we believe it for ourselves, guess what? Other people around us start to notice it too. So this week, as you walk in the world, look for the invitations. <laughs> Start to identify yourself as being anti-fragile. That adversity, that pressure, that pain makes us stronger. And that what I know is that the emerging world in front of us needs people who will rise up more and more and more in the face of adversity and stand for truth, stand for love, stand for our humanity, stand for our divinity. Because so much of the world is trying to fix what's broken and we need more people who are willing to stand into what works and to live it and be it and start putting more and more and more of our energy into our evolution instead of trying to stop the devolution, right? Where are we putting our energy? So bring it, <laughs> right? Because we all want to be stronger. We all want to reveal more truth and wholeness, health, wealth, happiness, love in our lives. But we have to pursue the meandering path of life with all of its twists and turns and opportunities. But when we do so, we will rise up and become more than we've ever been before. So invite the pressure and let it push you up. Take a deep breath. And let go. And so as we breathe together, just dropping ever deeper into this collective space, I just speak a word to remind each one of us that there is indeed only one life that there is one infinite, evolving, ever-present source of all that is, and I call it God. But it is also just the universe or energy or consciousness. It is the quantum field of all possibility. But there is one seamless presence that lives and breathes throughout the entirety of the universe. And guess what, my friends? It is breathing each one of us. Right here, right now. Breathe in. And breathe out. And let each of us remember that we are being breathed by the universe. That we are being lived by life. That it is the divine mind itself who speaks through us, sees through us, hears, and acts through us. And so let each one of us realize that there is more inside of us than we know. That at the core, at the center of who we are, is the most expansive, infinite presence that is. And maybe it's the pressure that invites us to grow. And so as we look into the world, as we look into our own lives, as we walk through each day, let us realize that everywhere we look, there is the opportunity to accept an invitation to step up, to stand up, to be more, to shine the light, to speak to truth, to say yes to life. And so let us do that everywhere we go, every day taking the time to deepen towards the truth of who we are so that we can more easily and effortlessly live that truth out into the world and be the light bringers, be the peacemakers, be the healers that our world needs because we are a people who can see into the possible, remembering that there is a vision of a world that works for everyone that is calling us. Let us say yes to it. Even when it shows up and says, how about now? We say yes, bring it on, and so it is.